Jacob Sears anointed, angelic ladders and angelic roads traveling. There's something that the word of the Lord came to me on today about Jacob. Jacob had to see his anointing to see. The Bible said in Genesis chapter 20, verse 10 and on, that Jacob took stones and made it his pillow. And he set his head to go to sleep. One thing that I want you to look at is that he took stones. He took stones. And the stone really represents Jesus. Jesus was the stone that the builders rejected. Then he became the chief cornerstone. And what Jacob did when he took that stone and pit his head by it, he received the prophetic anointing of Jesus. When he pit his head there, it is pitting his brain in alignment with the eyes of God. The seer's anointing came alive when he went to sleep. When Jacob went to sleep, he saw something amazing. He saw that there was a ladder set up on earth. It wasn't set up in heaven. So hereby you understand the angelic traveling. The ladder was not set up on heaven. It was set up on earth. The Bible said that the ladder reached to heaven. And there was angels ascending and descending upon it. This is so big because the angels were traveling on this ladder. While I was meditating on this, I had came into a vision where I saw angels bringing packages to earth, boxes. Some of it was the prayers of the saints, but all of it was harvests. Jacob's eyes was open up to see the harvest system of the kingdom. How when you sow, you reap. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Jacob saw what happens spiritually when one is living in obedience to God. When one believes their prophet. When one is meditating the word day and night. When one is praising God. When one is thanking the Lord. When one is forgiving people. When one is serving the Lord with gladness. Jacob saw what happens in the spirit when you sow a seed, when you name a seed. Jacob watched angels going up and down, bringing the harvest time of God to the faithful. But these angels was ministering to Jacob because Jacob was blessed. In the earlier part of Genesis chapter 28, the Lord is guiding Jacob's path. The Lord speaks to Jacob afterwards. The Bible says that the Lord stood above the ladder. And the Lord said this, look what it said. It said, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, thy father, and the God of Isaac, the land whereon thy liest, to thee will I give it to you and to your seed. You see? And God is telling him, I will bless you and I will bless those that come after you that are your children. Look at verse 15. The Lord told Jacob, behold, I am with you 
and will keep you in places wherever you go. I will not leave thee until I have done which I have spoken to thee of. Jacob woke up in verse 16. And it was a beginning of a song that we now sing today. It said, Jacob awake out of his sleep and said, surely the Lord is in this place. And in verse seven, it said that he was afraid. See, the presence of God brings fear. The presence of God makes you afraid. When his presence manifests, how dreadful is this place? You know what dread is? Great fear, great terror. He said, and this is the gate of heaven. Now, saints, this is powerful. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel his mighty power and his grace. That's where we get that song from right there. Surely the Lord is in this place. Now, look what he calls the place. He said that this is the house of God and this is the gate of heaven. Now, remember, Jacob is not in a physical building. He's in a location where God is showing him harvests. He's in a location where God is showing him rewards, angelic ministry. And he says that this is the gate of heaven. Saints, when you live a sowing life, when you're honoring God, you step into the gate of heaven. The gate of heaven is where angels are ministering directly for you to make your life match up with the glory of the blood of Jesus, the glory of the blessing of the Lord that maketh you rich. Jacob was inside of the realm of riches, Rest, restoration, relief, and redemption. The Lord showed him, this is what's happening to you because you're my sower, because you're my servant, because you're my worshiper. This is what I have granted as a privilege unto you. Now you know what happens spiritually when you're in the place of sowing into God when you build an altar where you're giving the Lord yourself, your money, your time, your eyes, your ears, your heart. There's an invisible ministry, an invisible economy ministering to you that the natural and the naked eye cannot see. And those that are with you are more than those that are against you. This is why the gospel power is so life transforming because the Lord sends beings with every deed of righteousness you commit. Every time you do something that the spirit has placed in your idea to do. Do you know what the spirit of love is? It is a translation of ideas from the Holy Ghost of what you should do towards someone, towards yourself. The spirit of love is where the father imparts ideas, knowledge to your soul and give you imaginations of what will create pleasure for someone else. The spirit of love it gives you energy to be unselfish. The spirit of love gives you grace to not only do something divine and righteous, but also to dwell upon the reward for doing it. The spirit of love is the desire imparted to you to share. The spirit of love is God anointing you 
to preserve, to guard, to protect. In the spirit of love, you receive a sowing mantle that attracts all of your increase, attracts all of your wealth, attracts all of your progress. The spirit of love takes away the fear of destruction and death, takes away the fear of defeat, takes away the fear of losses. The spirit of love is where God lives out his schedule through your members, the instruments of your body parts. He uses your mouth in the spirit of love to speak what is good and lovely and soft. The spirit of love captivates the mind and takes it into a world of activities that are satisfying, that brings an encounter of God to someone else. The Bible said that Jacob saw the ladder reach to heaven and the Lord stood above it. See, the Lord is standing, he's not sitting. When you're standing, it is a form of honor and salute. Remember the other part in the Bible where we see the Lord standing is when Stephen is being stoned. After he spoke about Moses and he's talking about history and the spirit of wisdom is flowing out of him. The other part of the Bible where we see the Lord standing is where the Lord is saluting Stephen for standing up for him, not being afraid of the religious leaders that was trying to stone him. So we see now two parts in the Bible where the Lord is standing and not sitting because he's saluting. Imagine what is Jacob doing that makes the Lord salute him? The Lord, when he stands up above this ladder, he's actually observing the angels and making sure that they follow the instructions to bless Jacob to the T. Remember what the Lord said at the end of the text in verse 15 in, in chapter 28. He said, I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. So the Lord is overlooking the work of the angels. Imagine the Lord is overlooking the work of angels in your life, making sure that you get the proper harvest, that the seed name comes to pass, that the promises do not get aborted, that everything that has been scheduled for you will come to you, that none of it will be stolen, intercepted. The Lord is standing above the ladder where the angels are traveling making sure that everything gets to you on time, making sure that the events happen as planned, making sure that the beautification of your life, the glorification of your life, the edification of your life takes place in its glorious manner. Imagine the Lord is standing above your ladder where angels are ascending and descending to you. This is why you praise God. This is why you give him glory. That's why you rejoice before him. You lift up praises unto him. You shout unto God with the voice of triumph. You shout unto God with the voice of praise. This is why you talk up with your lips. Say, hallelujah. because you're also echoing to the Lord that's standing up. While the Lord is standing up at the top of the ladder where angels are descending, ascending, are descending to you, for you, for your benefit, for your increase. Now, what is Jacob doing? 
What is Jacob doing that's unlocking this? Let's go to Genesis chapter 35. Jacob builds multiple altars in Genesis chapter 35. Multiple altars are being built by Jacob. Multiple altars are being built by Jacob. Jacob is building all these different altars where he's sowing his way out. Jacob is in a sowing rhythm, a sowing rhythm, a sowing rhythm. He stays on beat with God and the music of his life becomes miracles. The music of his life becomes the miraculous. It becomes money. The music of his life becomes increase, multiplication. In Genesis chapter 35, the Bible says in verse one, and God said unto Jacob, arise, go up to Bethel and dwell there. Make there an altar unto God. So he goes up to Bethel. And start sowing. Now, I want you to look at this in verse two. And you'll have to take dominion before the harvest officially come. Which is to get away from all your distractions. Remember, the harvest is where God is performing for you. And imagine if somebody is on stage performing and you looking at your phone, you doing all type of stuff. And they're performing for you. You turning your back, you looking at this, you talking to this person. And they're performing for you. So remember, the harvest is where God performs for you. So he want all eyes on me. Look at verse two. Then Jacob said unto his household and to all that were with him, put away the strange gods that are among you and be clean and change your garments. You see the protocol of harvest? You can't have evil and iniquity residing inside of you. You can't let yourself remain a victim of Satan's lies. Look what he tells the people around him, his people. He says, put away the strange gods that are among you and be clean. When he says be clean, he's saying walk in faith, walk in the word, get your heart back in focusing on Jesus. I'm talking in a modern day term. We know in Jacob's day that it wasn't, um, it wasn't the manifestation of Jesus, but in our day, you have the manifestation of Jesus. And change your garments, that means change your deeds. Your garments are your deeds. That's why in Ecclesiastes it says, let your hair lack no oil and let your garments always be white. Your garments being white represent your deeds, what you're doing. It represents also communication with God. Where he's telling them to let their garment, change their garments, get back into prayer. Get back into talking with the Lord and listening for the Lord and doing what the Lord impresses on their heart. He's telling them to change their garments. Remember, Jesus' garments turned white while he was doing a deed called prayer, intense prayer, talking with the Lord. Change your garments. And then watch this here. Let us arise. Arise means to come up into your position as a son of God. Come up into your dominion. Let us arise. Be unified in one accord, the same like mind of Christ. Let us arise and go to Bethel and I will make there an altar unto God. 
who answered me in the day of my distress and was with me in the way which I went. See, sowing is you telling the Lord, thank you for all that he has done. Look what he says, who answered me in the day of my distress. He's remembering the mercy of God towards him and it's ushering him into a sowing anointing. This is what he's dwelling on. So he's purposing in his heart to sow at the level of his gratitude. Look what it says right here. And they gave unto Jacob, verse four, all the strange gods which were in their hand. Remember the hand is where you sow. So in the hand is where you reap harvests. They couldn't reap harvests because they also had false gods in their hands. How many times are you sowing with your hand but you also got bitterness in your hand too. And the bitterness is blocking the harvest from getting to the hand. It's blocking money coming from getting to the hand because you also got worry in your hand. You also got stress and fear and anxiety in your hand. And it's blocking money coming from getting to the hand. and all the earrings which were in their ears. Now, I want you to catch this. It didn't say that the earrings were on their ears. It said the earrings was in their ears. Let me give you the revelation. Your ears is where you hear the gospel. Let him that have ears, let him hear what the spirit is saying. So the Bible said that the earrings was in their ears. That means that they could not hear God spiritually. Everything that God was speaking was not even touching base with their soul. There was instructions that God was giving them. There was tasks that God was giving them that never got to them because there was earrings. There was satanic devices blocking their ears and making them hard of hearing. And when your ears are not hearing what Jesus is saying, that means that you're stubborn, you're rebellious, you're in witchcraft. So they got rid of the things that made them hard-headed, stubborn, disobedient, that made them stuck on stupid. Look at verse seven. The Bible said that he built an altar there and called the place El Bethel because their God appeared unto him when he fled from the face of his brother. See, when you remember where God appears to you, there's a sewing a mantle in that thought. There's a sewing mantle in that meditation. When you remember how God showed up to open your eyes to something, how God showed up to teach you something, how God showed up to forgive you of something, how God showed up to protect you from something, how God showed up to help you with something, how God showed up to strengthen you with something. There is a sewing mantle. Look what the Bible said. He went and started sewing. Let's go to verse nine. One verse after. It says, and God appeared unto Jacob again when he came out of Padan Naram and blessed him. You see what the sewing flow produces? God while you're constantly sowing, he constantly is blessing you. That means that your sowing is determining the level of empowerment you walk in as a person. Some people walk in more empowerment because if you look at it, Jacob is the one sowing and Jacob is the one that keeps on receiving blessings from God because the blessing is attached to the seed. 